Hi, so we're back with the edition of uh, the Sustainability Podcast and with me here is Dr. Richard Manton, who is the new Director of Sustainability in University of Galway. Welcome to the podcast, Richard. Thanks very much, Nila. Um, so first of all, maybe if you, I know you're an alumni of University of Galway. Uh, you were here as an undergraduate student and as a postgraduate student. What were your experiences here? Well, yeah, f- firstly, maybe just to my own background is that I'm from Cratlow, County Clare, um, which if, if your listeners know, it is a beautiful part of the country that there's Cratlow Woods and that I think it was probably coming from that area that really instilled in me a, a love of nature, of walks and hikes and so on. So I suppose really had that interest in sustainability f- from a young age. But then, as you say, it was really coming to um, University of Galway or NUI Galway as it was then as an undergraduate student that really kind of brought it home to me, the importance of sustainability and I suppose what you can achieve through a higher ed- education in an institution like this. So I actually studied civil engineering and then I suppose my interest would have come from a love of maths and science, but also I would argue that within civil engineering, that's that very strong ethos of public service and I suppose I would have been been quite interested then in social justice and what you can contribute as an engineer or specifically a civil engineer in areas like water or transport and again I think just take water that I think clean water supplies wastewater treatment they're not the sexiest of areas but I think actually are probably some of the largest contributions of um, human ingenuity to uh, the quality of the human condition so yeah, I think I had an incredibly positive experience here as an undergrad in civil engineering. The one downside was that um, it, part of all engineers do a five to eight month work placement. Now, mine was scheduled to take place in 2008, 2009, which you recall wasn't actually the most uh, easy of times for civil engineers and the construction industry. So what we did, and in fairness to the civil engineering department, that they put in place what were essentially undergrad placements within the university. So they were uh, research in their nature, but very strongly partnered then with community partners. So our project was on sustainable construction technology, where we looked at um, different construction technologies for the developing world. And we were partnered with um, an organization that was then called the Alan Curran's African Projects. So people would be familiar with the uh, excellent work done by Alan Curran's in Zambia. So then that led us to a a research mission to uh, Zambia, which I think was an excellent experience. And do you feel that that had a a, a big kind of impact on you and the direction in which your career would go? I think absolutely. I think it was transformational um, because rather than it's really the nature of applied research and applied learning, um, service learning. And of course, the the work that the Community Knowledge Initiative does here, um, I, I think, is fantastic. So as a, we were in third year at that point, and then we carried on the project into our fourth year, it meant that we were able to see the direct impact of what we were studying, what we were researching. So there, were, there was a team of four of us, um, a third year civil engineering students that went over to Zambia with two qualified engineers. We would have also worked closely with uh, Professor Jamie Goggins in the civil engineering department. So we went over there, it was just for a few weeks, but I think it was really experience packed in that we would have visited orphanages. We then visited uh, construction sites where they were using what was called a sustainable so- or a stabilized soil block, which essentially is an alternative form of construction technology that you can use then that is more cost effective, is much more sustainable, but also incredibly sturdy then for building houses and schools in rural Zambia. So look, happy to talk about the, the technical aspects of it, but just in terms of personal experience, I think for me, it really brought home what we had learned as part of the degree and then would have inspired me then to go on to do further volunteering in the developing world, but also then would have inspired an interest in sustainability more broadly. And you carried on and you did your postgrad and indeed your PhD here as well. I did, of course. And actually, even just um, but before starting the PhD, um, even just continuing that Zambia uh, uh, thread was that unfortunately then in our third year, was when the horrific earthquake took place in Haiti, um, which very sadly killed, I think, up to 300,000 people, one of the worst uh, disasters in, a, in modern human history. And again, one of the reasons that made the impact and the death toll of that particular earthquake so 
horrific was the very poor quality of the, the living conditions and the building materials and structures that were in place in Haiti. So again, having gone through that experience in Zambia, then I went on to volunteer in Haiti for a month, then that year just after uh, finishing fourth year and graduating from civil engineering. So again, I think it was, uh, it was a harrowing experience in some ways, but then also an incredibly rewarding experience to be able to work with an American charity over there and again to see the importance of I suppose, volunteering, of sustainable development, of um, good quality construction materials also. So that's, yeah, you can see where your career has been progressing and you've come in here this year as the inaugural director of uh, sustainability, which has a lot of responsibilities uh, with it. What do you see as the biggest challenges for your role? So yeah, that um, I think it's fantastic that first of all, the university is investing in the creation not only of a position such as director of sustainability, which I'm absolutely delighted to be the, the, the first holder of that particular office, but that we're also hiring others uh, in an office and might talk a little bit about that sustainability office and those new positions. But really we're standing on the shoulders of giants in that if you look at the excellent work done by the Community University Sustainability Partnership, known as CUSP, that I would have been involved, just as you mentioned in my uh, PhD and postdoc days here in uh, engineering, geography and sociology, that that was when we just at the start of the CUSP team, again inspired by um, C Professor Colin Brown and Professor Paula Doherty, um, that then that led on to the establishment of the first sustainability strategy. And then while I then went off and worked elsewhere for seven years, coming back then it's really been uh, eye-opening to see the progress that the university has made in that intervening period. So while look we're delighted to be setting up a new sustainability office, it's really based on the, the leadership shown by those, those two particular figures, the CUSP team, the vast majority of which is voluntary that people take on on top of their, their studies or their research or their teaching or their day job. And then, of course, Michelle O'Dowd-Lohan, who you interviewed, who I think has been an absolute stalwart and champion in this role, again, who's really carried, carried it forward. So look, again, delighted to be in this new position, but it's really only carrying on the work that has been done here for, for quite a number of years now. And, and like going forward now, uh, and there has been a lot done, and we've talked about them in previous podcasts, uh, what would you like to see um, what, I suppose, what are the challenges that you, you think we need to face in the immediate future that we can do something about? Yeah, uh, uh, apologies, uh, I skimmed over that. Um, look, I do think probably, and maybe it's coming from the engineering and transport perspective, um, I do see transport, travel, mobility, whatever you'd like to call it, is probably one of our greatest challenges. That if you look at the carbon footprint report that has been produced for the last few years, and again, I might come back to what I see as sustainability because I don't, it's not all about carbon and climate, but just taking that as one frame of, anal of analysis, that transport related uh, emissions make up roughly 50% of our carbon footprint as a university. We have a bit of work to do to refine the data behind that and COVID affected and so on, but again, roughly 50%. So it's a major, major chunk. That uh, comprises both uh, the commuting side, so about 40%, and then the international business travel then roughly 10%. So look, everyone's aware of the travel challenges in Galway, that look, it's a car dominated city, unfortunately. There's also broader factors, socioeconomic factors, like the accommodation shortage, like the cost of living, that again, impact on people's travel modes. But I do see one of our greatest challenges, if not the greatest is, how do we partner with other agencies because again in transport a lot of that is unfortunately outside of our own control that we're dependent on infrastructure public transport economics and so on but how can we partner with others um, in terms of providing more sustainable public transport services but then also how can we work with the camps community particularly those who live within five kilometers who may have the potential to cycle to campus or you live that bit closer maybe to walk to campus but what can we do to support their sustainable travel options, whether that's through facilities or it's through maybe even communicating the benefits of active travel. You mentioned there about corroborating with communities, like how important is it to you 
uh, to be able to collaborate with communities and with other organisations in terms of sustainability? So our sustainability strategy, and I know your, your previous interviewees would have gone through that in more detail, but it's structured around the pillars of learn, live and lead. And happy to go into any of those in more detail. But it's very clearly communicated within the lead section. The first of all, we're not going to achieve any of our goals if it isn't through partnership with communities. But also we would like to be a leader as well in the community. Now, when we use the word community, that is somewhat vague. It's open to interpretation because we're talking about different communities on campus, a community of students, a community of staff, but then also the communities beyond the campus walls. So that may be local residents or it may be, for example, policymakers, public transport providers. So but there are already great examples of research projects that collaborate with communities. On my own journey, as I mentioned, that was uh, heavily influenced by community partnerships within education. So I really do think community par partnerships are essential to our sustainability journey. And you, you mentioned there earlier about um, what your idea of sustainability is, what your definition of sustainability is. Would you like to expand a little bit on that? That was an interesting... Yeah, I nearly regret bringing it up now because it is, <laughs> it's quite a tough one to It to is very difficult because that. like you said, it's not just carbon, it's not just transport, it's, it's not just the tangible things, I suppose. Yeah, so the way I approach it is that what are the major challenges we face as, as a society or as, as a, an environment? And some of those are environmental, of course, that if you look at the climate side, it's very clear now that not only is global warming and climate change happening, but it's accelerating in pace. Look, having the most warmest years on record the last two years in Ireland, having more extreme weather events, rising sea levels, and then on the biodiversity side of that environmental dimension, it's very clear now we're losing species, endangered species and so on. But also then there are the major social challenges we face, like again that impact probably on nearly every listener um, to this podcast, whether that's housing, healthcare and so on. So what I see sustainability or sustainable development is, is trying to meet those challenges together and then trying to develop solutions. So the classic definition of sustainability or sustainable development comes from the Brundtland Report in 1987 that talks about meeting the needs of um, the current generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Um, of course, that's developed since 1987. People are probably familiar with Donut Economics by Kate Rayworth. I think that's a very useful graphical illustration where at the one sense you have a social foundation through a social floor through which no one should fall, but then you also have an ecological ceiling, again, based on planetary boundaries. So again, it's about living within that donut or within between that floor and that ceiling. And I think that very usefully brings together, on the one hand, the environmental issues, the emergencies that we face with then the major socioeconomic challenges. So I think it's about trying to integrate those dimensions and then try to be as inclusive as well for example, I think the SDGs, and again, Michelle would have talked about these in depth and is a, is a fountain of knowledge on the SDGs. But I think the best thing about the SDGs are that in one sense, it's a shared blueprint that was buy-in from over 190 countries through the UN, but then also that it specifies some of those challenges rather than talking about generalities, presents 17 goals, again, negotiated, by the way, Ireland was one of the two co-negotiators that agreed the goals, but then also specifies the targets, the indicators. So I think that's become this shared framework to try to achieve sustainable development. And just speaking about SDGs there, I know University of Galway hosted uh, the SDG champions this week uh, on campus. How did that go? Yeah, it was an absolutely fantastic event. So just to, to remind listeners that the University of Galway is designated as a national SDG champion, the only university to hold this uh, quite um, impressive title and that was designated by the Department of Environment, Climate and Communications. So just this Tuesday we hosted the other 25 um, SDG champions on campus. The main goal was in one sense to try to build this network where we share knowledge with the other champions who, by the way, are quite a diverse range of organisations. Just at my table, sit on one side of me at the GAA, the other side was the FAI, but then also had community groups, uh, the credit unions, RTE, 
um, of Clare County Council, a real mixed bag. So coming together to share experiences and ideas just on how we can champion the SDGs and embed them within our own organisations. So we were delighted to host them on campus here because we could showcase all of the great work that we've done. We walked them along the SDG trail and biodiversity trail through campus. Thankfully, the, the weather suited us that day. And then we had catering provided by uh, Sale Cafe, which is a social enterprise here on campus. So again, look, it was a, a fantastic day and that we look forward to continuing that collaboration with the other SDG champions. And I know you're planning something for Earth Day as well. That's on the 22nd of April, I think. Um, do you have anything specifically planned that, that we should know about, that we should look forward to? Yeah, so we're, we're, this is a hot topic at the moment. And now that we've um, just gone beyond that, uh, that SDG Champions, our, our next milestone event is the, or activity, is Earth Day. So that's really the, the primary environmental focus day of the, of the calendar. So we don't have an in-person event per se, more we want to use this as an opportunity to communicate our sustainability office and then what are some of the key ways in which the campus community can live sustainably. So I would ask people to keep an eye out on our social media, on your own uh, university email, on the screens around campus, because we will have some videos, nice photos and messaging, again, just how you can help us or how you can engage with sustainability. Because again, I think it is something that we're all part of. This isn't the university leadership or this isn't um, the government of Ireland. This is something that we would ask all members of the community to get involved in. So please do keep an eye out for those messages. And I on suppose Earth Day. that's that's the one of the biggest challenges is engaging um, the community, um, students who are often nomadic, who are here for a few years and then leave, and staff who sometimes move around as well. So I suppose it is quite difficult capturing. Um, that that audience and then getting them to be inspired by your message. It is and maybe you might start with on the student side and I do think we should tailor messaging and again I think I'd even go beyond communicating I think it's probably about engaging because even in our sustainability strategy we talk about co-creating and co-designing that we want people's ideas and we want them to get involved as much as that we're not just here to just try to change their behaviour. So students, of course, we only have 12 weeks with them each semester that it's like they're here and they're gone again. So I think we need to be much more focused. And again, we're working closely with the students' union. So for example, the, the climate crew, or I would have also presented to the students' union council, uh, working with the class reps there. And then we're, we've also just this week launched our student sustainability leadership awards. So there, um, there are two positions there where each awardee will um, get a 4,000 euro scholarship and then an eight week placement with our office during the summer. So again, we're not just looking for that to be, okay, here's your scholarship, your placement, but we want them to work with us to help us to design messages, to design campaigns, so that then we can be speaking the language, but also meeting, I suppose, students, where, what, are, what do they see as the main challenges? How would they like to participate? On the staff side, I think it's a little bit different, of course, because you, we interact in a little bit of a different way, but also patterns of consumption are, are somewhat different. In one sense, commuting, staff tend to le live a bit further out, may have different social circumstances also, but maybe while the strength of students is that there's a certain newness to it, that you're at a pivotal time of your life, I think there's, and th that there is evidence around life events that that's a window to maybe for sustainable change. Whereas for staff, I think we can have more of a prolonged engagement. Again, we can work with um, like your own office in terms of internal communications. We can work through as well the different colleges and schools, many of which have established sustainability committees or green lab committees. Um, they may work in delivering sustainability programs themselves, work in sustainability research. So again, there are different media for us to connect with staff um, than students. But again, look, both are, I think, pivotal forms of uh, engagement for us. So just maybe on the last question, you could maybe tell me what you see as your vision um, for sustainability uh, in University of Galway going forward. I think we are yeah. already a leader in many ways um, and uh, it, it's great. And uh, how do you see us building on that? 
Yeah, so again, look, it's recognizing the, the major progress that we've made. As you said, that we are recognized as the number one in Ireland through the Times Higher Ranking. We've got a gold rating in STARS, which is the, the, the primary international rating. I suppose where I'd like to go is that one step further, really a step change. It's uh, the vision as I describe it is that I would like to see this university, but also Galway as a whole, Galway City, and certainly as the distinctive or the defining characteristic is sustainability or being green. Um, I'm sure there, there are lots of other cities you could give examples of across Europe, but two that I particularly like that I've visited in recent years are Exeter and Bristol in England, where it's almost like you walk through it and you can kind of feel the environmental or green or sustainability characteristics almost oozing through the town, whether that's the, the physical environment or the, the people you speak to. So that's where I'd like us to get to where people think, oh, sustainability in Ireland, and you straight away think Galway, and then the university being, um, I suppose, indistinguishable from, from the city in that regard. If I was to maybe make it a bit more specific, because maybe that might sound a little bit lofty, is that we have a window of opportunity when students come to study here. And that what I'd like to see is that when a graduate leaves this university, no matter which degree programme they study, everything from engineering to sociology to medicine to, to business or law, that they would leave as a sustainability leader or a global citizen. So in that sense, that sustainability is embedded into every single degree programme. Um, also, I think the campus itself, I think physically, uh, we've, there's been a lot done, but an awful lot more to do in terms of being a true exemplar in the biodiversity and the natural world within the campus, but also then our buildings and so on. And through collaboration then with students and researchers that it can be a living lab so that okay, if you want to test an idea on sustainability, okay, you go to Galway and you work with them. And then maybe a final dimension would be on that research side, that we do face quite a lot of challenges as a society, but both on the local level and the global level, that what I'd like to see, and as you asked about community, that through our research partnerships and generally how we lead on sustainability, that everything from agricultural science and work with peatlands and rural change, to then say technology and med tech, that a lot of our research areas are already very closely aligned with sustainability. So look, trying to summarize those, again, I'm building on existing work in that it's that learn piece, as in how graduates leave this university. It's the live uh, in terms of how we operate the environment. And I think that we fully live in tune and that we restore the natural environment and then that lead area where that we as a university, but Galway as a whole, are really seen as leaders on this. And I think we do have some blueprints to work um, on that. That I actually read a couple of uh, quite interesting books recently produced by um, academics within our own university, looking at the areas like the medtech sector or the cultural sector. By the way, the, those books, I'd highly recommend them are um, Beyond Hardyman by uh, uh, Dr. John Cunningham in history, and The, um, the uh, Making of a Capital of Culture by uh, Pat Collins in Geography. And they both talk about that relationship between the university and the city, in terms of, if you look at Druid Theatre or the Arts Festival or Machinus, that this was a very close partnership between the education research of the university, provided then with, the, with an atmosphere, or with of course, funding and infrastructure and so on, that would have led to the, this Galway now being essentially famous for its cultural productions. If you look at MedTech, again, it was the university playing a very central role in terms of the development of an industry, be it like digital through Boston Scientific through MedTech. And now we do have an incredibly strong cluster. So just looking, so Galway is, I think we would admit, famous for a cultural sector, famous for MedTech sector, can Galway and the university also be famous for sustainability, green enterprise, um, and so on? So I think we have a blueprint there, and that's for my vision. I'd like to see us uh, achieve that for Galway. And on that very positive note and very inspiring note, um, I'd just like to thank you for coming in, Dr. Richard Manton, Director of Sustainability. And I might add those books uh, in the notes at the bottom of the podcast for anybody who's interested in reading them. They sound really interesting. Thanks so much for coming yeah. in. Thank you, Nina.